Hey there, city. Welcome back to the channel. It's a girl, Remo, and I'm back with another reaction video. Today, guys, I'm going to be reacting to Douglas Murray. Douglas Murray speaks, and this is Douglas Murray obliterates Muslim activists. Douglas Murray obliterates Muslim activists with shocking facts. My first time checking this out and I want to check it out with you guys. But before we get started, we have some amazing people watching us for the very first time. If you are new to the channel, hello, I'm Vera. I do reaction videos. If this is something that you love, why not join Vera City? Hit the subscribe button below, turn on the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops. And that's guys, let's get started. Who are the people who intervened most in it Syria? Isn't just hang work. on, hang on. Let me answer it. Who intervened most in Syria? It wasn't America. It wasn't Britain. It's Iran, Russia. It's, among others, countries including the one we're in and others you're, you're around the Gulf before, here. Before we got to Let's Syria, we had, Iran, we had Libya, we had many countries many in this neck of the woods were much more involved in the Syrian civil war than my country was. Well, you're also so, do you want to take some responsibility added, for that? Do think, you want to take think, more refugees here in Qatar? Do you want to take around. more in the Gulf? No one. So, right. I don't understand why. Are they not giving each other space to talk? No breathing space. I can hardly hear, like, what exactly is going on here. <sighs> Let's go on. Douglas Murray obliterates Muslim activists with shocking facts at an event in Qatar. In a heated exchange with a less than impartial moderator, Murray slams the suggestion that Western nations, such as the US and the UK, bear all the responsibility for the Middle East refugee crisis and therefore should take in the majority of refugees. He brings up the fact that foreign intervention in the Syrian civil war, which led to over 5 million refugees to flee their country, largely came from Russia, Iran, and yes, Qatar. And yet, collectively, they have taken in fewer than 500 refugees. The moderator is clearly caught off guard and unable to offer a comeback. Next, we discover a shocking revelation. Where does mercy fit in that? Not just mercy, but the obligation, well, the legal obligations of states to I'd refugees. Suggest, I'd suggest that we all make sure we don't shift responsibility. Uh, there is a responsibility to everyone. That would include the state we're standing in now, wouldn't it? It would include all the states in this region. It would include the brother states. It would include the Ummah. It would include everybody. It wouldn't just be the Italians. Now, the Italians, by the way, and I, let me just finish uh, this that's point. That's a valid, the valid Italians, issue. Let me respond to it. Let me, let me finish the, the point. Oh, my God. It's a valid issue. But the unlike the European let countries, me allow me to just make this point. And like the point. European countries, I'll respond to two they, points, they are not parties to the 1951 Refugee Convention. So Conveniently. The obligations are, well, it's just a fact. Conveniently, isn't but it? But I'll let you care. The moderator yet again <laughs> attempts to shift all responsibility to Western nations to deal with the migrant crisis. Crazy. She lambasts Italy for not doing more to help, despite the fact that as of 2022, Italy hosted close to 300,000 refugees. In comparison, in the same year, Qatar hosted fewer than 300. This is doubly absurd when one considers that Italy is some 2,500 kilometers from Syria over often treacherous waters, whereas Qatar is just 1,500 kilometers away and can be reached by land. In another flagrant display of bias, the moderator cuts Douglas off as he attempts to address the point. Only, she doesn't help her case. She lets slip that Qatar is not signed up to the 1951 United Nations Refugee Convention, seemingly believing that this absolves Qatar of any moral responsibility to accept refugees. Very convenient, as Douglas points out. Next, the clash between Douglas and the moderator reaches fever pitch after she not so implicitly accuses him of racism. You seem to almost suggest that they come to your countries with a lesser breed of values. No, Would I don't you? think I said that at any point, and that's another time you've tried to put something in my well, mouth. Um, so when you talk about the difference the in list. values, what do you suggest? Um, look, oh, yeah. uh, uh, first of all, I didn't say that. I said that there are challenges, because we do know that there are challenges. And let, let's, let's just be frank about this. I mean, for instance, I, I've been in, in the Gulf for uh, the last week or so. Uh, I, I've, I see more burqas in my home city of London than I have seen in the Gulf in recent days. Certainly. The moderator crosses the line here. No moderator should ever show bias during a discussion. But to point-blank accuse someone of racism and put words in their mouth is quite unbelievable. 
Douglas shows incredible restraint as he swats back the accusation and continues his point unruffled. Recognizing the challenge of mixing different cultures together in no way equates to racism. Just as the culture of immigrants has to be respected, so too does the culture of the host country. The question is simple. At what point does immigration become too much? The UK has its own very distinct culture which is already under threat in certain areas as migration shows no signs of slowing down. Many immigrants themselves, along with the natives, appreciate the culture of the host country they're in and wouldn't want it to disappear. But the moderator doesn't stop there. She has the audacity to insist British people change their culture to fit in with the immigrants. But again, yeah. is it all down to burqas? Because again, you're not asking people in, with other traditions whether they care about the sight of people drinking alcohol well, or well, 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 up in well, bikinis. You, well, again, well, it's a well, very we could, we could Western-centric viewpoint. I'm, I'm not, I have to say, you're, you're going to bark up the wrong tree if you think you're going to persuade a Brit that we should stop drinking alcohol because of people arriving in our country. I mean, that's not going to happen. The, these things well, are all a bit of give and take. You bring your but, own but, traditions that don't quite fit with theirs. Well, they don't. Uh, yeah, there, there, are, there are, as I said, and before we got all confrontational, which you did for the get-go, I said what the problem is here is that these things are all rubbing against each other. And in that situation, you have to work out what things you're willing to give up, which things you're willing to compromise on, and which ones you're not. You're not going to persuade the Brits to massively change their culture, but... The moderator's comments here actually hit the nail on the head regarding this issue. If the host country is to tolerate a very different culture than their own and not require a certain level of assimilation, what's to stop the immigrant culture from demanding the host culture assimilate to it? It's a specific feature of Western countries that they embrace liberalism. Behave and act in whatever manner you wish as long as it doesn't harm others. This way of thinking has led to incredible advances in human rights and flourishing. However, what happens when this kind of liberal society gives hosts to cultures that don't share these values, that believe their culture is the only true way to live? As Douglas points out, in this situation, the host country is bound to lose at least some of its most important values. The idea is met with sniggering from the audience, which causes Douglas to finally lose his cool. This question Today. directly, if you can, which of your values are you most afraid to lose? Which ones are most threatened by oh, uh, freedom the of arrival speech. of refugees? Freedom of speech. It's the first one. Oh, you think that's not a problem? I mean, you think uh, that's not a problem? But, but you I'll think let you sorry, take no, it on. no, no, no. Let no, me, let me, let me pick up on that. Let me pick up on that. It's what very about easy to snigger. It's very easy to snigger about this until you've had friends shot in a newspaper office. It's very easy to laugh about that until it's happened to people you know. It's hard to know what the audience is sniggering at. That freedom of speech isn't important? That the West doesn't really have freedom of speech? Or that it's better that freedom of speech is done away with? Whichever it is, it's a very ominous sign, which is exactly why Douglas gets so combative. As a journalist himself, Douglas knows full well how freedom of speech underscores every other right we have in free societies. Do away with it, and everything else falls. And he's seen firsthand the attack on freedom of speech that has resulted from the proliferation of Islam in the West. In particular, the Charlie Hebdo shooting in France in 2015, when 12 journalists were brutally shot by two Muslims for printing cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. Seen in the light of this atrocity, the audience sniggering is disgusting and evidence of their ignorance of the issues surrounding this debate. Luckily, Douglas is able to shine a light and offer the only sane way to go forward. All I'm saying to you is, you can agree with me that people who say that most people arriving are going to be violent are ridiculous. Yes, but also don't claim it's ridiculous for people to have serious and sincere concerns about what is happening. Because if you do, there's no way anyone's going to arrive. And that is the reality. Yeah, Absolutely, Mark. How do you deal with this? It is yeah, a reality. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Here we see Douglas's oratorical gifts and rational brilliance in full flow, even eliciting agreement from the heavily biased moderator and applause from the previously derisive audience. To say that all immigrants are good and will fit happily into their host countries is as absurd as saying they're all bad and future terrorists. It's a far more nuanced issue than that, and we have to be able to have the discussions and confront the challenges we're being faced with. First and foremost, we should all fight against the accusations of racism if we dare to bring these issues up. Such accusations are the quickest way to shut down debate and ensure that the future of immigration in the West will be one of misunderstanding, disagreement, and strife. Faced with a wholly oppositional panel, moderator, and audience, 
Douglas equipped himself superbly and undoubtedly managed to win over many with his arguments. If you enjoyed this look into the mind of Douglas Murray, please hit the like button. Give us your thoughts on the issues discussed in this video in the comments. And for more Murray content coming soon, don't forget to subscribe. Wow. Honestly, is this woman for real? Like, is she serious? You are coming. <laughs> you are leaving your country. You are going to another person's country. You are going to a different country. Yet, you are telling them your own rules. Are you for real? It's just like you come to my house. Probably you're my friend. You come to my house and you, and you start giving me rules in my own house. That No, 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 no. Don't put that clothes there. Don't do this in my own house. Is that reasonable? So, <laughs> that's why she doesn't even want Douglas to talk. Because she knows that she's saying trash. Because why would you say that uh, they shouldn't uh, drink alcohol, blah, blah, blah. If you know that alcohol is a sin, why not stay in your country? Why do you have to move to America? Why not stay in your Muslim country and enjoy your perfect life? So why are you moving? Why are you going to someone else's country? Why are you going to another country? If you're in another country, you have to abide by their laws there. First of all, they don't even want you in their country. They don't want you guys there. Yet, you guys are still trooping in. Fine. You guys are there. They are still now giving them your own terms and conditions. It is hilarious. I'm not the only one that finds this hilarious. Because at this point, I don't understand what is really going on with this woman. So, you want the country, the host country, to change their culture for you. Unwanted guests. Make it make sense. She's not even acting like a moderator. She's acting like she came there for war. She came there to battle. Because she wouldn't even allow Douglas to talk. Imagine. I mean, why would any country change their way of living for immigrants? Make it make sense. Because to me, it doesn't make no sense. What are your takes on this? What do you guys think about this video? Drop a comment down below. I totally enjoyed this. If you enjoyed this video as much as I did, give it a huge thumbs up. And please share this video. And if you're new to the channel, join Vera City. Hit the subscribe button below, turn on the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops. And that guys, I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.